All right, we are live for another episode of Real Estate Junkies podcast. In this podcast, we are featuring uh, stories and highlighting people who are making impact in the real estate industry. Today, we have with us Alexis Frankel. She is a realtor here in Michigan, servicing Wayne and Oakland County. Alexis wears multiple hats with finesse, a mentor, coach, and a guiding light for first-time homebuyers. You know, she doesn't, you know, just end with buying and selling transactions. She is changing the way real estate game uh, uh, is done here in Michigan with her cutting edge approaches to customer service, to, you know, using social media in a digital age where social platforms are, you know, a lot of time these days, first touch points, Alexis delves into how to make those interactions count. Alexis, it's a pleasure having you on the podcast. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So let's start off by, you know, talking about how you got into real estate. What, I guess, like, how did real estate find you and what made you get into real estate? Yeah, absolutely. So really, I started um, when I was 19, turning 20. So fresh out of high school, I was, you know, in college full time as well, when I decided to get my real estate license. Um, So as I was starting my real estate career, I was still taking college classes. And I really came to the realization, you know, as I started going through more transactions and closing deals, um, that real estate was where I wanted to be, you know, um, that that was my end game. And I love learning, you know, I I did enjoy going to college as well, but I didn't see it a good fit for me because I knew that real estate was my focus. Um, So that's really how I got into it. Um, I also, my, my previous broker for my old brokerage, I've had her on Facebook for quite a long time. We grew up um, in the same neighborhood of Inkster and I was able to watch her blossom into real estate and grow her business. And I was like, that's motivating. I I can do that as well. So that's kind of what started it all. Wow, that's amazing. And I know you're hitting some numbers now, you know, now that you're in real estate, and you also became a mentor and a coach in the real estate world. You know, what's your number one piece of advice for any agents that, you know, want to fast track their success like you did? Um, I would honestly say immense yourself into the industry, learn everything you can, of course, get a great mentor, you know, that will be there to answer your questions, walk you through every step of the way. Um, and then to just go for it. You know what I mean? Don't wait, jump into it. I wish I would have started as as soon as possible. And I was pretty new to the game myself. <laughs> for sure. And, you know, with your experience, you know, guiding first time home buyers and helping working with first time home buyers, can you share a strategy that has been a game changer in turning, you know, uh, potential uh, relationships, connections into clients and close deals for agents that might be listening in? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like especially with first time home buyers, you want to educate them. Um, You want to make them understand the process. So it seems a lot less stressful, gets rid of a lot of that anxiety. And it makes your job as the realtor a lot easier, you know, when they understand what's going on. So I guess I would say, you know, have them come in for a buyer's consult, take that extra 30 minutes to do a phone call to explain the process, inspections, appraisal. Um, because once they understand it, then they're excited. And that's that's what you want. That's what you want, a client that's excited. For sure. And your approach, I know your approach is like with custom, you, you take, you know, you take on real estate transactions from a customer service point of view, right? What's a tip you can give agents to elevate their customer service game immediately? Like, you know, uh, I see a lot, you know, working with agents that they're just trying to sell, 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 sell. Like what, what advice would you give to a real estate agent that might be agents that might be like struggling with providing that service? Um, I feel like it's really, you have to have like a heart of service, I, I believe. You know what I mean? We're in this business or you should be in this business to help people. And if that's at the top of your mind, your clients will feel that and they will see that you're passionate about it and not passionate about selling them a house, but passionate about helping them find the fit for their family and not rushing them or making them feel forced or pressured. I feel like unfortunately, a lot of agents in this business, you know, make make clients feel pressured. And then 
it's not the type of transaction you want. So I would just say, you know, be patient, educate them, listen to your client, um, and do all you can as an agent to close the deal and give them the information that they need. Okay, so we take an educational point of uh, approach to it and educating the clients. Now, social media has become, you know, a crucial touch point in real estate and the industry, the way we are, uh, where we are going in this digital age, right? Can you share like one strategy to make uh, first interaction, right, on social media, on social platforms, comfortable for potential clients? Like, how do you do it? Like, what's your strategy? Well, so luckily I have built my social media up to the point where a lot of people reach out to me first. Um, So it's kind of just, again, you know, reaching out when I'm supposed to. Um, But as far as like reaching out yourself as an agent, I would just say, you know, be respectful again, like come at them as a point of like, how can I help you? You know, what problem do you have that's stopping you from buying or selling a home? Take Mm -hmm. that problem and and solve it and then you have a client ready to go so just be a problem solver i guess i would say sure so it's what i hear you say is basically uh take a service approach rather than like you know hey do you want to buy or sell a house right rather than like figure out what the problem is what problem do they have and try to solve the problem for them now you know balancing yeah for sure and Balancing traditional real estate wisdom, right? Like the old school way, traditional way of doing things with digital platform is challenging, right? Like I work with a lot of agents. They're like, you know, I'm a cold caller or a door knocker, right? And I don't do social media, right? Like how do you, you know, find that for yourself? Like do, how do you integrate both approaches in your business? And I know how, but I'm asking you the question. (laughs) Yes, no, absolutely. So it's kind of one of those things where social media is the top of my focus, you know what I mean, where I can put one post out to the world, and you know this, you know, it could reach tens of thousands of people. So obviously, that's the most efficient. But I do believe that it's important to hit all bases of real estate. You know, Mm -hmm. so quarterly, I do send out some mailers. Um, I don't really door knock anymore. It seems a little scary to me at this point. Um, But I do recommend, you know, like the little door hangers, just so you are, your face is everywhere. You know what I mean? They see your face in the mail. They see it on their door. They see it on social media. Um, So you're, you're sticking to the traditional side of real estate with like, and also emphasizing the digital part of it as well. Um, and I also, I feel like everyone kind of uses this now, but QR codes on all of your marketing material, um, that you are sending out by mail or by door. So it Mm -hmm. connects them to your social media, which gives them like a prep love information and knowledge. And then they really get to know who you are as a person, which helps a lot. Oh yeah. And uh, QR codes, like see people know about it obviously and i think it's really underused or the way it's used is not very uh efficient like you know uh people use it for business cards but it's just like you could really take advantage of qr codes if you have some type of landing page that's providing value and you're bringing traffic you know i don't know if you're sending out a mailer to find potential sellers use the QR code to bring them to like a market update video or something. Right. Uh, and, and that would add value to what they are looking for and potentially they will do business with you. Now, the reason why I asked you that question is because I saw you door knock with video uh, and that was so creative. Like I, I have not seen anyone else do it. Was it like Westland or Plymouth somewhere, somewhere in that area where you were door knocking and talking to homeowners and getting them on video. That's very creative. Like how'd you come up with that idea? Yes. So I was in Plymouth, um, where, which is where my office is located. So we decided to go out and um, EXP Lux Group were new to the Plymouth area. So I was like, you know what, let's get out there, um, get our brokerage name out there, get my name out there so we can just get familiar with the community. Um, and it was such a beautiful thing because they were all so welcoming and excited and all the homes downtown Plymouth are gorgeous. So a lot of people were excited to show those off. Um, the idea really came from we, you know, I feel like on Instagram and things like that, I've seen a lot of interviewing videos Mm -hmm. and my videographer, Logan and I were like, well, what if we just, you know, walk up to their home and see how that works. So very unplanned, very scary. Um, but it gained a lot of traction, so it was worth it. (laughs) Yeah. I, I think you should do those more. 
I know it's a little awkward. I get it. Like you're knocking on strangers door and then like asking like, Hey, would you be okay with if you, you know, uh, take a video of you and ask them about, but it's very, I guess, out of the box. Right. Um, so now working in Wayne and focusing your business in Wayne and Oakland County area, what would you say like your top three things, you know, any, any agents needs to know when it comes to specializing in a specific geographical area like if you want to target a certain area i just feel like you have to be familiar i mean obviously that's a given you know but be familiar with of course the freeways the restaurants if you're going to be moving a client into that neighborhood you got to know the selling points you know what's the best restaurant to eat at you know where are they going to buy their groceries what kind of experience are they going to have and if you can provide them with that information um they're going to be a lot more excited to move forward when they have that understanding yeah so be being hyper uh focused locally right knowing yes. the best places to eat in play mm -hmm. best places to hang out in and i think mm -hmm. that definitely adds you know value to like that area that you want to target whoever wants to move there they obviously are Googling that information anyway, right? So if you're if you're the first one to talk about it, I think you you can be the first one in the door. Now you know social media algorithms change frequently, like the way it operates. You know what content to create and what you know how many times you put out content and what, what in what format and all of that is changing all the time. How do you stay ahead of the curve to ensure that you're you know uh, marketing and you are like you know at staying at the forefront of what's happening? Um, I feel like, you know, of course, just kind of doing your research. You know what I mean? When you follow so many other agents doing great things, it's it's very easy to replicate. You know what I mean? When they say, like, don't, don't restart the wheel or something like yeah. that. Don't um, recreate the wheel. <laughs> yes, don't recreate the wheel. Um, and I feel like that's what I would say. You know what I mean? You see what other successful people are doing, posting, how often they're doing it, what they're talking about, and you recreate that for your audience and you'll, you'll have the same success as them. So I guess I just pay attention to what people that are doing better than me are posting and providing to the universe. And I try to, you know, do something similar, put my own like sold by sprinkle touch on it. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, just stay consistent. You know what I mean? You never want people to forget that you're in real estate. Um, I feel like I try to remind everyone every single day. And that's what I tell my mentees. But it's you really have to. You really have to do that. Yeah, for sure. And my mentor, uh, Tony Robbins, he would say that the fastest way to become successful in anything is following a proven model. And, of course, social media is hard to say who's successful, who's not. Like, everyone looks successful, right? <laughs> Uh, but True. you can always see what content's working, right? Like what is getting the most engagement? That's like, regardless of how much money they're making or how many deals they're closing, at least they're creating content really well that you can replicate. So I really definitely uh, relate to that. Now, you know, online reviews, I think is so under um, rated, right? Like people are not taking full advantage of it that can actually truly set you apart from anyone else, right? Like how do you encourage your clients to leave good reviews for you? What do you do? Um, so, I mean, really like, you know, by the time that I'm giving them their keys and handing that over, I mean, they're so excited to tell, tell everyone that I did a great job. So that's, that's really a beautiful thing. Honestly, I just, I really just ask after close, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, because they're usually really, really excited to do it and, and tell their friends and family, you know, how their process went. And I feel like on the realtor side as well, I mean, how many times have like you gotten a call from Zillow or realtor? Probably not that often with a client, but when somebody calls you because they saw your realtor.com, you know, profile and they love the reviews that you have, that should be motivating enough for ask, like to ask for that review. It's a thousand percent worth it. That's simple enough, right? I think a lot of agents just don't do that, right? Like, just don't I ask. Just ask. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty simple. Just hey, just ask. No, and just and what ask. I yeah, what I recommend is ask them when they're happy, right? Mm -hmm. Ask them when they're thanking you for whatever it is they're thanking you. Like, hey, I appreciate that, and I would appreciate it more if you leave me a review, right? Just ask that, right? Um, Absolutely. 
And if you no. want to get a little crazy, you could ask them the day before close. So they uh, really feel like they have to do it. <laughs> yeah. I, and something that I, I learned recently was that uh, I had a five-star experience with, uh, you know, serving you, working with you guys. Would you leave me a review? Right. And then obviously you said five-star experience. They're going to leave you a five-star mm-hmm. review. Now, absolutely. what got you into like the mentorship and mentoring others and coaching people? Like, how did you make that? Like, where did you find that from? Mm, so honestly, as I started to grow my own business and started to gain some success in the industry, really people just started to reach out to me, um, you know, asking what I was doing and, you know, how I was successful, how I was gaining clients. Um, I don't pay for leads. So that's a big one that everyone gets super interested about. Um, yeah, I, I just had a lot of people coming to me starting their business and didn't really know what to do and how to grow from there. So that's where I kind of come in and, you know, and am able to hold new agents hand and even experienced agents to like, make sure that they're getting the most out of their business. And, yep. you know, I'm just really helping them in that sense. But they usually just come to me. <laughs> okay. And so that's how you got started. Now, focusing on like buying, selling transactions, right? I know you're with EXP. For agents aiming to diversify their income, you know, what other real estate, I guess, avenues would you recommend they explore for, you know, other income? Well, that's, I guess, you know, a shameless EXP plug there, but... I I mean, if you're looking at statistically alone, like the money that you can make with different revenue streams of EXP, like, I mean, it is a no brainer with the mentor, the mentor program alone, I mean, is huge. You know what I mean? I actually used to train agents at my first brokerage and I got paid, I think it was like $500 at every new agent I brought in, right? So then you flip the game and now I'm at EXP and you get paid off of every single transaction they close. Um, well, three for the mentor program and then as a sponsor forever. Um, but nonetheless, that opens a huge stream of income and a lot of money coming in. And if you are putting the time into training these agents and making sure they're doing well, you know, we should get applauded for that and helping them. Um, and we do. And, and I say that was such a huge game changer for me coming to EXP. It has been amazing. And then, of course, like the stock program as well. Every time I log into that website, I am just (laughs) so excited because I like it's money that I forget that I have in a sense and I have access to. And I'm like, wow, this is, I mean, amazing. It's truly a beautiful thing. So passive income, stock portfolio uh, uh, definitely gives you more diversification than having to just wait for that, you know, commission check. Now, since we talked about EXP, how did EXP find you and what brought you to EXP? What was the, you know, obviously now you know, right? But before you knew, what was it? Well, for me, it was a lot of like misconceptions about EXP. You know, there's a lot of agent like attractors in EXP. So that almost kind of like threw me off from what they actually offered. Um, so I really wasn't recruited in any sense. Actually, I followed an amazing agent who I work with, Nicole Yeager. Um, oh, wow. oh, she's amazing. And, you know, we did, we actually did a transaction together early in my career. And from that point on, we had each other on social media and the way she was branding her business, um, you know, the growth of it all I, I watched and I knew that it was because of the brokerage that was behind her. You know what I mean? That she had that backing and that freedom to brand herself. Um, So yeah, that's really how I got in into EXP was just watching other EXP agents be so successful and like have all of these resources, you know, training EXP world, all of these cool things that I was watching. And I was like, I don't want to get left behind at like an older kind of model brokerage you know what yeah. i mean yeah. so that was the biggest thing so so um how long have you been in exp now i know you came as recent as i did but how, how long has it been man so april 20 i think it's been about two i'm, I'm coming up on my two-year anniversary i think uh, april 20 what's your anniversary time what's the date um, on your... so my cap date is may 1st somehow may 1st. i don't know so it was a little april. after yeah so yeah. did you come in 2021? Yes. Okay. So I came April, well, uh, 
March. Yeah. So my cap date is April 1st. So March 2022. So now, you know, I since you've been with EXP, what were you saying? I said, I think it was 2021. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so like what has been so different from your the traditional broker? Like you've been there, right? Like you've been here at EXP, like what has been a game changer for you as far as EXP? How has that changed the way you do business from before? Um, so the biggest thing was e like joining EXP for me came with a lot of independence. Um, at my past brokerage, I was on a team and um, something that was new for me was like really doing all of real estate completely on my own. You know what I mean? Like I didn't, I didn't rely on like my team or my mentor and for me, that was a beautiful feeling. It felt very freeing that I knew that I didn't need any help or like any assistance running my business, um, which I enjoyed because I, you know, became a real estate agent for like the freedom and the flexibility. And with EXP, it, it gave me that, you know what I mean? It gave me that. Um, and just realizing, like I said, that I could do it all on my own without the help has been amazing. And EXP really has a huge, like, collaboration like it really is collaboration over competition um and i you know i definitely felt like we were kind of like pushed against each other at my old brokerage sometimes just like who's gonna do better who's gonna do this and then like you know here we're like super like everyone's sharing their tips on getting offers accepted and like training resources like there's no like secret sauce that people are trying to keep from you i guess yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's how I feel too. It's just like traditional brokerage thrive because of the competition. They they like boil up inside of the brokerage. Like, oh, they will do a like a leaderboard and like you know who's number one and two. And it's yes. it's a lot. It's like there's so much that goes toxic uh, culture that goes into that to try to make the brokerage perform right and mm -hmm. and get the profit go up and the brokerage literally brokers are profitable when they do that and when they don't they don't right and i feel like in exp yes there is still competition there are people yeah. still have that scarcity mindset right uh, but there is i feel like there is way more people who are willing to collaborate who are willing to work with each other like you're an exp agent i'm an exp agent i don't get anything from highlighting you but i i feel like there is uh, definitely, uh, something happened with your video, but there is definitely, uh, can you hear me? There, Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, that's okay. So there is definitely like, uh, I feel like the growth really truly comes from collaboration in my previous brokerage. Um, I was there for three years and for three years I was trying to like pull people up, right? Like I would say like, Hey, do this better, do that better. And a lot of times because from the brokerage, that wasn't the culture, right? They were like, people were competing against each other but when you're trying to contribute to people that look at you like competition there's like a lot of toxic energy there and i'm like this is not me like i don't i don't, yes i like some healthy competition where yeah. people are competing against each other to do better than themselves like you know if i see someone else do really good i'll look at my production number and say how can i do better right like because yeah. they are doing it right so in your, I guess, like, I saw your numbers and you're, like, killing it, right? And in a shifting market like that it is right mm -hmm. now, what would you say is making you or keeping you consistent right now? Mm, I would just say, like, trust the process. Like, trust the process. Do what you're supposed to do. Make the follow-up calls. Um, you know, stay top of mind. Don't let them forget about you. Um, bring education, again, to this market. Um, you know, everyone's scared about high interest rates. Yes, they are, you know, they're higher than we've experienced in the past few years, but you just have to make them understand like why it's a good time now, um, you know, how it benefits them. And then, yeah, I just really just trust the process. You know what I mean? Follow yeah. your schedule, do what you're supposed to do. Um, and you know, the clients will come to you. Yeah. Yeah. Do the basics, right? Do what yeah, you're supposed, what you're to, supposed to do. Yeah, a lot of people, I feel like they just get discouraged by all these external factors, right? Oh, the race and rates just went up again, right? Like, what are you going to do about that? There's nothing you can do about that. But what you do have in control is talking to your people. And I, I talk to real estate agents like, 
oh, all my people know I'm a real estate agent. I'm like, well, there is a lot of noise, right? And yeah. it's easy to forget. And there is a lot of competition. There's a lot, like each family probably has one or two real estate agents. So yeah. your family just knowing you're a real estate agent is not enough. You have to give value. You have to provide value. And you have to show up with value for them to find you valuable enough to reach out to you when they're ready, right? So I definitely agree. Yes. Just do the basics, start the process. Uh, uh, I mean, trust the process. But anyway, yeah. um, with everything that's happening and uh, how long has it been now you're in real estate? Um, so I'm coming up on my four-year anniversary in December. Wow. So before COVID, you got into before COVID, right? And you went to the COVID market. Where do you feel the industry is going? I know you're fairly newer right like but still this has been a crazy market and i'm sure i look at your numbers you're doing great so what where do you see the industry going the market going in the next one or two two years well i would say you know definitely that we these prices and interest rates they can't hike up forever i mean <laughs> so really what i'm anticipating is next year we're probably going to have a pretty significant you know rate drop that's going to cause a lot of competition because that's what everyone's been waiting for. Um, you know, so then what we're going to see again is probably similar to the beginning of COVID um, where we had lots of multiple offers, you know, going over list price, high appraisal guarantees, you know, as little as possible contingencies. Um, where it goes after that point, once we have another big boom, I, I'm unsure. Honestly, I'm unsure, but I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. And me as a, you know, I, I still think of myself, I guess, as a newer agent and being on, you know, the younger side, I'm excited for if we switch into a different type of market, you know, I would love to learn what it would be like to be like more of a buyer's market, you know, that would be amazing. Um, so I don't know, I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes unsure, but excited. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Uh, I seem like we are not getting away from this highest and best offer situations, right? Like last August, when the market shifted until January, we were like preparing for, okay, this is going to be, or at least we will get away from the highest and best offer situation. It's going to be a different market, but this season hasn't been like any, hasn't been any different. Like we pretty much every house had highest and best offer since January. Uh, mm -hmm. Good house, obviously. Good house, price price the right way. But now I definitely agree with you. I think uh, by January, February, March, latest April, the rates pool will probably come down to like low six five, right or five, yeah. and that will create a lot of demand and a lot of buyers are gonna be on the market. A lot of sellers who've been holding off because of the rate will definitely jump in the market. Mm -hmm. But I think by the end of next year, we should see fours, right? That's just my prediction. And the end of the day, is, is I'm looking into my crystal ball, right? Just talking yeah. from experience. But I, I don't see this market, like a lot of people are waiting, like, oh, rates are going to keep climbing and the market's going to crash. That, like, there is no logic behind that, the, that type yeah. of talk, right? Like, We're still in, like, a healthy market. You know what I mean? As, as long as, like, economically, government-wise, nothing crazy happens, like, we're doing all right, you know? Yeah. Even economically, like even that argument where like, oh, a lot of people can't afford, uh, uh, you know, uh, like living costs is so high because of inflation. 70% of people that hold mortgage have like high equity, if not paid off. Yes. So it's like, even if they can't like afford living costs, they could afford housing. And as long as people can afford housing and people are not selling being foreclosed on right and rate of foreclosure is like compared to 2008 it's just like 2008 and we are right here right so it has yes. and if you went half it, it just like doesn't logically make any sense for a market to crash so anyone listening in waiting for the market to crash you're going to be waiting for a long time you Stop know waiting. <laughs> grab popcorn grab whatever yes. you can grab because you're going to be waiting a long time but anyway like what what is next for you uh what do you what do you have coming up? What projects are you working on? Uh, I know you're still like very young. So obviously you're looking forward to this long journey, right? What is the end goal for you and what is next for you immediately? Yeah. So I guess what's next immediately is just finishing out the rest of the year strong. You know, we've got about a third of the year left. 
Um, so really just honing in on the rest of the goals that I need to accomplish, um, ensuring my production and sales volume is where it needs to be. That's like current, but I guess the longevity of is it, the longevity of it um, for me is I really want to be able to have multiple investment properties. You know, I want to get in some flips and um, possibly become a landlord, you know, um, I feel like being immersed in the real estate industry, it would be hard for us not to become investors ourselves one point, um, at one point or another. So that's definitely in the, in the cards. And then I guess really, you know, a big part of the EXP is like, I plan to retire pretty early and have, have some, uh, passive income streams from the agents I bring into our company. So I guess that's another really long-term goal as well, but very much in the works. That's amazing. And you'll be surprised, by the way. It's like you think it's common sense that you own investment properties is common sense. A lot of agents out there that been in industry for 30 years and have never invested in real estate. Right. So uh, it's definitely a great goal to have and get into earlier, sooner than later. Right. Like, so what do you do? Like, do you learn about invest? Obviously, we do this stuff. Right. But like, yeah. do you do you, I don't know, listen to podcasts, read books about investment? Like, how do you learn investing? Oh, my gosh. Podcasts are my my best friend. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love podcasts. I love, you know, um, audio books, reading, all of that. Like I said, just like if the more that you can learn about a topic, the less worrisome or scary it is. Um, so that's what I find myself doing as well. You know what I mean? Because mostly I work with, um, you know, like, not investors, just normal people buying and selling homes. Um, so I really try to like get in more of like investor mindset, you know, talk to investors, see like what their experience has been. Um, you know, I've talked to a lot of people regarding if they prefer to just like fix and flip or if they prefer to hold their properties and rent it out, um, you know, getting differing opinions on there and seeing what would like fit best for my life. Um, I just feel like it's all learning from people who have experienced it before. Yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. Okay. Alexis, thank you again. We we are coming up on uh, our time here. They appreciate your time. Thanks for sharing your story. And those of you who are listening in or probably will listen to the recording, if you're looking to automate your lead generation and conversion, we have a course. We have had this course for three years now that we used to sell before to in, uh, real estate agents and brokers. Now, because of the market shift, what we are doing is giving this course away for those of you who are looking to leverage Facebook, Instagram ads to automate your lead generation and conversion. It comes with 120 conversation flows to pre-qualify your leads that you generate and be able to you know, build the database. These, this is the same strategy that we have used to build the database of 130,000 people here locally. Uh, so if you are interested in that, you can uh, send me a message on any of the social platforms with the word lead gen, and I'll give you access to the course. Again, Alexis, it's been a pleasure. Uh, thank you for everything that you do and can keep continue to do what you do. I think a lot of people are following what you do because of, you know, you leveraging social media at the level that you do. Uh, uh, people, you know, you're an inspiration to a lot of people. So uh, keep doing all the good work. And I'm looking forward to EXPCon, by the way. I can't wait. I can't wait to see you. Thank you again for having me. It has been amazing. And I look forward to creating some content together as well. Thank you. Yeah.